Hi, I'm Jace, and this is Wine Chat, and we're here today with Chris Millard from Newton Winery. Chris, thanks for coming out. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Sometimes my job is pretty good. It's actually about 9 o'clock in the morning here, and I've started the day uh, tasting some of these wines. Uh, and uh, highly recommend the unfiltered Chardonnay for breakfast, uh, but we'll get there in a second. It's a uh, tough way to start the day. Yeah, but, I know. <laughs> twist our arm. Uh, so let's start with this. Newton makes a big thing. It's a big to-do uh, of the, uh, what do you call it, nature by design? Nature by design. Nature by design. And you use uh, indigenous yeast. Correct. And uh, you also uh, make a big deal that the wines are, are unfiltered. Correct. So for those of uh, us uh, that aren't as familiar with uh, what these might do for a wine, what these things really mean, uh, can you give us a brief explanation? Yeah, so as you say, we're probably one of the first to proclaim it on the label as we do. Um, and uh, this goes back, well back into the, uh, into the early 90s and late 80s when we first started doing this. Um, and the concept behind Unfiltered and the nature by design and, and the yeast and bacteria is we go to great lengths to grow really great grapes and really just want to let nature do its thing. Um, so if we filter a wine, you take out some color, flavor, aroma, and you alter the structure of the wine when you do that. So we don't want to mess with it at all. Just uh, make the great wine, put it in the bottle by itself, and, and don't mess with it. Okay, so more specifically though, and I'm going to drill it down to, it's a, it's a good overview. How does indigenous yeast, first of all, how does it get there? Sure. And how does it differ from the use of commercial yeast, and, and what will I taste in the wine that makes it different? It's a good question. So the native yeast come from, uh, come from the vineyard. They're on the grapes when they show up in the winery. And again, we're not adding any commercial yeast or anything. Uh, after about four or five days, they start to ferment on their own. And it, they really add this uh, layer, a background layer of, of complex flavors and aromas. So there's a whole host of yeast that start fermenting uh, in those first four or five days. And then after that, the traditional yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, takes over and finishes the fermentation. But in those first five days, there's all kinds of really interesting um, complex characters that show up in the wine. And so that's the difference. You taste a bottle of unfiltered Chardonnay against uh, even our red label Chardonnay or any other traditional California Chardonnay, and they don't have that, that layer of complexity in the back. Um, and and it's, it's really obvious when you taste them. Wow, so does this add an, an air of unpredictability to everything? Or does that make your life hectic sometimes? It, it can. It definitely is. A, there is definitely a, a risky winemaking or, or I'd say extreme winemaking aspect to it. Um, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> and so that's part of the, the art or the craft of it. But the science part of the winemaking is, is watching and guiding Mother Nature, if you will. So you're, you're new uh, to, to Newton, for, only Correct. for a year or two now, yep. um, but you've been making wine for a while. Were these practices that you employed before you came to Newton? I've worked with native yeast and bacteria before. Um, I haven't done it to this extent, though, not, not to this level or to this, uh, yeah, to this level before. I mean, certainly I've, I've managed uh, native yeast fermentations, both whites and reds before, but uh, never to this level. Yeah. It sounds like you enjoy your job. I, I love what I do. So you yeah. can't ask for much better I mean, than that. Here we are, 9 o'clock in the morning. Right. Drinking, drinking wine. wine. <laughs> yeah. It could be what worse. Other, it could be worse. Uh, so the other question I have is, uh, this is all to express uh, not only complexity, but a sense of place, too. Um, that's stressed in, in the, all of Newton's literature. What is the sense of place that we can expect from uh, St. Helena, in the case of the red wines, and Correct. Carneros, in the case of the Chardonnay? Well, so let's start with Carneros, because we're talking about the Chardonnay here. Um, we have both vineyards in Carneros, which is uh, southern part of Napa, uh, Napa Valley, down uh, north end of San Francisco Bay, really. So much cooler. Okay. A little more minerality comes from that, uh, from that region. The other part of uh, the, the grapes that make up this wine come from a vineyard that we have in Knights Valley, which is north of Calistoga, actually in Sonoma County. And we get much riper, uh, more melon fig characters from, from that location. So the blend of the two make, a, I think, a really nice bottle of wine. And uh, the reds, briefly? What, what And the reds, so Spring Mountain. Uh, so St. Helena, uh, in the kind of the middle section of Napa Valley. Okay. But then we're up on top of Spring Mountain itself. And our vineyards uh, start at about 500 feet, go up to about 1,600 feet. So we're at elevation, and it's all planted to Bordeaux varietals. That's what the, our puzzle here, the Icon right. wine, um, all the Bordeaux varietals are in that, and uh, just great, great character 
uh, from, from that soil. It's really, really intense volcanic soil that makes really intense wines. How much of your time is spent in the vineyard at these sites uh, before you get to making the wine? Uh, quite a bit. So uh, the winemaking is important, obviously, um, and, and a lot of time and effort goes into that. But uh, the old cliche is true. If you don't have good grapes, you can't make good wine. So a lot of, uh, a lot of time is spent in the vineyard um, uh, through the whole season, really. So from pruning, uh, last year's uh, uh, shoots and everything off, uh, through bud break, um, through the frost season, uh, verasion, uh, which is what's coming up right now, here in the next few weeks, we'll go through verasion, where the, the small little uh, pea-sized green berries turn a color, uh, the red, red grapes actually get their color, soften up, um, all the way through harvest. So quite a bit of time. Uh, really need to establish that connection, uh, make that connection from the vineyard into the winery. What are the, the tiers of wine we're, we're looking at here? So three tiers, uh, as we say, are red label, for obvious reasons. Um, every day... Oh, I, I thought that was the green label. Uh, yeah, no, My mistake. Sorry. <laughs> um, every day, uncomplicated food wines. Okay. Um, not chasing a style in particular with the Chardonnay, so it has oak, um, has sweet fruit, um, nice balance to it, but in the end, it's just uncomplicated food wines. That's just stuff to drink. Stuff to drink. That's, um, that's yeah, fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next is the, uh, our white labels here, our unfiltered tier. So we have an unfiltered Chardonnay, which we have in front of us. We also make an unfiltered uh, Merlot and a Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, and then at the top end here with a dark label is called the Puzzle. And the Puzzle is 100% from the estate on Spring Mountain. Uh, Bordeaux style blend. Um, this, the 05 vintage here happens to be a Cabernet based uh, wine, but a little Merlot, a little Cab Franc, a little Petit Verdot as well. Um, and all about elegance, uh, just beautiful fruit, really vibrant uh, black fruits, but then soft, long, great weight on the palate. And I tasted this wine earlier. I'm going to say to me, this is this that one you need to give a, a little time. And you said you decant the reds, right? Typically winery, before serving them. Exactly. Yeah, but the winery in the tasting room, we can't. Uh, we're pouring 05 vintage reds now. Um, still young. These wines will age 10, 15 years easy, but you can drink them today. But a little decanting, a little breathing, a little that'll, patience. That'll help. If you out. got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can drink all this stuff in the meantime. Right? Absolutely. So, what? Because uh, you've been, well, I'll say it again, and you've been at Newton a fairly short time. Right. I'm sure you got lots of plants. Uh, what is in the future for Newton, and what changes would you like to see? Uh, well, not to uh, not to screw this one up. Right, right. <laughs> to be That's, frank. They, they, they won't Everybody let you likes do that the sure. unfiltered Chardonnay the way it is, so I'm not intending on changing it at all. Um, it's a fantastic wine. What I bring to Newton um, has more to do with the Reds. Okay. So uh, Newton's history has, has made fantastic wines in the past, um, but it's been with a French influence, a Bordeaux influence in California. Um, if you look at a map, Bordeaux and Washington are actually in line, not Bordeaux and Napa. So long since gone are the, are the Bordeaux-Napa comparisons in my book. Um, so what I bring to Newton is a California perspective. You're taking it back for California. There, awesome. There you go. Yeah. Now, the one last thing I have for you here, I understand from a, a previous interview you did uh, for Women's Day Radio, which you can find online uh, if you don't read Women's Day regularly and already know about it. <laughs> uh, but I understand you brew a little beer. I do a little, make a little beer. And I happen to have a beer. Oh, look at uh, that. All right. Since you've tasted, uh, or I've tasted your unfiltered wine. I'm going to make you taste my unfiltered beer. Fantastic. I can get it open here. Fantastic. So I want your, I want your brutal opinion. There might be a little yeast in there. That's how unfiltered it, it is. That's right. Just like mine at home. Now, it's not unfiltered for any reason, except I don't have any way to filter it. So, oh, well. well it's got great aromas to it. You said this was Thank a you. Belgian... This is a Belgian yeast, yeah, it's not indigenous. I don't know what yeast would be indigenous to my kitchen, but it's probably some sort of bread yeast. It wouldn't be good. Now, this is the way to start the day. Awesome. <laughs> I like it. I concur. I'm going to, well, I'm going to, let's two fist here. All right. And uh, this has been, <laughs> this looks silly. Uh, this is good. <laughs> all right, this well, the right way to do it. <laughs> we've got a whole day ahead of us. Uh, I'm Jace. This is Chris, uh, different Chris, not the usual Chris, in case you haven't been paying attention. And this is Wine Chat. Salute. <laughs>